Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Auger. I'm a professor of clinical medicine and director of academic affairs for the pulmonary PT program in the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine at the University of California in San Diego. I'd like to welcome you to CTEF.com. In this video, we're going to discuss how a patient's candidacy for pulmonary thromboendotorectomy surgery, also known as pulmonary endotorectomy, is assessed. First, a quick reminder of what we're talking about when we talk about CTEF. CTEF, or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, is defined as a mean pulmonary artery pressure of at least 25 millimeters of mercury and a pulmonary capillary wedge pressure of no more than 15 millimeters of mercury in the presence of multiple chronic or organized occlusive thrombi in the elastic pulmonary arteries after at least three months of effective anticoagulation. Now, this may sound self-evident, but before we can move into discussing assessment of a CTEF patient for PTE surgery, we must think foremost about what goes into correctly making the diagnosis of CTEF. When symptoms and history suggest pulmonary hypertension, an echocardiogram is used to image the heart and to estimate hemodynamics. When findings on the echo, like right ventricular dilatation or overload, right atrial enlargement, or tricuspid regurgitation point to pulmonary hypertension, a ventilation perfusion scan, or VQ scan, should be obtained. The VQ scan is highly sensitive for the presence of chronic thromboembolic disease. And it's also important to note that negative findings on the VQ scan effectively rule out the presence of CTEF. Right heart catheterization is used to measure hemodynamic values and to confirm the diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension. And finally, pulmonary angiography is typically used to confirm the presence of CTEF. The most important thing to know about PT operability assessment is that it should be made by an experienced interdisciplinary CTEF team, including a cardiologist, pulmonologist, radiologist, and an expert surgeon who would perform the PT procedure. Operability assessment is an inherently subjective exercise, dependent on the experience and skill of the CTEF team. And because of that, the World Symposium on Pulmonary Hypertension recommends that, in CTEF cases initially deemed inoperable, a second experienced CTEF team should be consulted to confirm that assessment. So how does an experienced interdisciplinary CTEF team go about assessing operability? Well, pulmonary angiography is still generally considered the gold standard technique for assessing operability in CTEF. The angiographic patterns found in CTEF include pouch defects, webs and bands, intimal irregularities, abrupt narrowing of the pulmonary arteries, and complete obstruction of the vessels at their points of origin. CTPA, computed tomographic pulmonary angiography, is also used in operability assessment. The higher resolution images of CTPA provide additional details for assessing operability, such as vascular wall thickness and surrounding structures that are not well appreciated by conventional angiography. CTPA can also reveal associated findings suggestive of CTEF, such as bronchial artery collaterals and a mosaic perfusion pattern. Importantly, it may serve to screen for underlying metastinal disease or other conditions that can mimic CTEF. These mimics can include thromboembolism, tumor emboli, and in situ thrombus. The CT scan is also useful in evaluating inflammatory, malignant, and developmental causes for pulmonary hypertension and an abnormal VQ scan. While CTPA can be very helpful to distinguish between these disease states and CTEF, such distinctions may be difficult to make. As a matter of course, if interpretive questions should arise, contact an experienced CTEF center for assistance. Like CTPA, Contrast-enhanced magnetic resonance angiography can be used to assess pulmonary arteries down to the segmental and subsegmental level. MR imaging also offers the possibility of assessing mean pulmonary arterial pressure, pulmonary vascular resistance, and other hemodynamic parameters non-invasively. However, the technique has yet to be widely adopted in CTEF, apart from select centers that have the requisite experience and expertise using it. 
In addition to the information obtained from imaging and pulmonary hemodynamics, operability assessment should also consider patient frailty, the presence of comorbidities that might limit the success of OPTE, and whether the risks for surgery outweigh any perceived benefits to the patient. How these factors play in the final operability assessment will necessarily depend on the experience and the skill of the surgical team. Before closing this discussion, there are a few key points I'd like to highlight. First, every patient diagnosed with CTEF should be assessed for operability, and this assessment should be undertaken by an experienced CTEF team. When a case is deemed inoperable, if possible, have the case reevaluated by a second experienced CTEF center to confirm that initial assessment. By its nature, operability assessment is a subjective process and what may appear to be inoperable for one CTEF team may well present as operable to another team. And finally, keep in mind that PTE is the only potentially curative treatment for operable CTEF. That's why it's absolutely essential to order a VQ scan to screen patients with confirmed or suspected pulmonary hypertension for CTEF. I sincerely thank you for visiting CTEF.com and watching this educational video. Please bookmark this site and check back frequently as we'll continue to update CTEF.com with new content.